Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. Well, I mean, not that long. You know, about an hour. Just long That's enough. a long time for an ant. And who are you? I'm Rhett. There you go, see you forgot that part. You did screw it up. No, you interrupted me. And I didn't. You said. I could tell in your eyes you weren't gonna say you your name. You said, not that long of a time. What's your name? I interjected. What if we had, what if, it was a custom, like a cultural custom <laughs> in America that you could only say your name when asked. <laughs> like, I kind of feel kinda like, like that, a vampire could only enter when invited. Yes, I feel like that would be a good societal rule because instead of people coming in and be like, I'm Rhett, it'd be like, I only wanna know your name if I ask it. What's your name? And I'm Link. This week at the round table of not as dim of lighting because we're still in the alternate creative house location. Maybe permanently, I don't know. We are discussing, we're bathing in the aftermath of our separate but, but equal vacations. <laughs> yeah. Separate but equal vacations. Uh, potentially identical vacations. I know we both went to beaches. We both endeavored to surf. Uh-huh, we both uh, took our families. We both took our families. We both came back with one less family member. Hmm. Ooh, that's a tease. <laughs> no, I that, I, I took a head count before and I took a head count. What if that was the case? I always take a head count. Like, oh crap, yeah. you're right. I like, I'm, I'm, left Shepherd. I'm like a chaperone counting heads on the well, bus. Well, I, I have an extra family member right now because we have a, we, Locke has a friend who's been living with us for, I don't even know how long it's been now. So I, so I know what it's like to have three kids. I've had three kids for two months. Is he pulling his weight? He does more than both of my children combined. Great. He's very helpful. Like what, like I'm chores? I'm thinking about hiring him. So he does chores. He just is a more conscientious person than my kids. So you go, and, you, and it may be, it you, might be because when you're, you're trying him out for a trade. When you're, when, yeah, can you do that? Sure. Uh, when you are at some, now this is what, I've been told because I a lot of times I have parents who come, I have parents who too. come to me and they're like, you know, Locke is so conscientious or he's really helpful and he's so polite and he's a great conversationalist and he offered to help with this and he said thank you. And I'm like, well, he doesn't do that at home. Mm -hmm. He's a jerk at home. I, I talked to, I'm not gonna mention any names, but I, I talked to one of my children who happens to be one of the, the oldest one. <laughs> it happens to be one of the oldest or the <laughs> or the oldest one. Uh, I kind of feel like maybe I didn't center the shot. I think maybe. Is there more of me in it? I feel like there's more of, I'm closer to the center. And I didn't do that on purpose. That's not good. I mean, cause I feel like. It's fine. You, you know what, just you, go with it. You've got a little bit of like, I've got like a full six inches off my shoulder. I'm gonna do a little adjustment. Just keep going. Uh, I can do it. Oh yeah, you, you're close, see, you're close, no, wrong way. Too much, it's too much you. I think this is pretty good. <laughs> that's way too much you. I think that's it. I think that's centered. Mm, yeah, that's <laughs> spoken like a semi-narcissist. Okay, stop. How is that? Oh, that's nice. Oh yeah, see it gets a little bit of the skin wall in there. That's, that's the ticket. Oh, a little peak ticket. of the skin wall. You get a peak of the skin wall, that's how you know you're, you're centered. Um, I said, you know, I, we have the discussion, it's like, hey, I wanna treat you, I want you to treat me like you, like you would treat your friends, like at least at that level. I don't, I'm not asking for the respect of a parent all the time, I'm just asking for the respect that you would give wow. any other human being. Wow, just a, a minimum yeah. of respect. Yeah, it's like, I hope, what I say is, I hope you don't treat your friends this way. Oh, I get that. Mm. I don't wanna talk about this anymore because I, I'll get in trouble, I'll get more <laughs> of it. Uh, yeah, so we had our vacations, uh, it's, we, we, came, we came back with more tan. Yeah, yeah. We I'm not, you talk about the skin walls. I have been. I mean, I'm looking at my people skin have wall been over noticing there. that you have been been getting closer to matching my skin wall. Which incidentally, I mean, we didn't plan this because we didn't know we were going to record ear biscuits in here. But we should have done the, the skin walls on opposite sides because now you sit in front of my skin wall, which is you know to the naked eye, it's the same as your skin wall. If you're just in here looking at them side by side, you'd be like, well, that's the same color. And we know one is Lake House and one is what's yours. Um, 
It's the guy's name. Chadwick Brown. Chadwick Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I it remember that. It just came back to you. It came to me, man. That's uh, Chadwick Brown, that's that's Lake House. But you're looking pretty Lake House, I'm looking pretty Chadwick Brown. And I, you know what, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm rejuvenated and baked. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sun-baked. Um, well, and it, we, interestingly, so we, we, we usually go on vacations at the same time because, you know, our lives are in sync in a lot of ways, and if you go on vacation, at a different time when I'm not on vacation, and then that means why well, now I gotta go on vacation when you're not on vacation, and that's two weeks of us not being together. Who knows what could happen in those two weeks? One might think that we should stagger our vacations in order to like, cause there's a whole, you know, other stuff that we give input on. It's not just being on camera together, to like run a company. Correct. But we just do that remotely. And we have very trusted people who, who, can, who can handle it for a week, which yeah. is, which is great. Maybe they can handle it for more. Maybe we just, oh, what if we just, what if the default is vacation? You, it, I like it, where it, this it, is going. <laughs> I mean, it, it, let's face it, what we're doing right now is is still another form of vacation. It is. We're just, you know, we're in a house. It, no, man, this is work, man, look. We're hey, working so hard. You got your Admiral hat on. Hey, I got a new hat. That's one, of, that's one of the things I brought back. I didn't bring back another child, I already had one, but. On a scale? I did bring back a captain's Admiral, you call it ad, Admiral's hat? I like that. On a scale of one to 10, just to get into this, how would you rate your vacation? And then dive in, man. We got, I got a lot I need to report on. I, you know, there's, uh, I got a story. Oh, I got stories. I got angry. Oh. It, to me, I'll let you rate first, but when I rate my vacation, it's, there's a corollary to how many times I got angry. Mm. Either at other people or myself, or just, just kinda, just kinda lost my cool or, uh, my peace. Oh man. That happened once. So I had a pretty good vacation, if I can only say that happened once. Well okay, so on a scale of one to 10. I'm, I'll tell you about it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that an, uh, an eight is like what you bring, Ooh. the expectations that you bring into an expect, to, yeah, to you a don't, vacation, you, you right? Yeah, you don't expect a perfect. You know things, some things are gonna go wrong, but you're kinda hoping, you're usually hoping for about an eight, like this is gonna be better than my normal life, right? Cause it's a vacation. And then in like nine and 10, that would be like, I don't know if that's ever happened, right? Four. Oh gosh. You, I mean, you had a brightness in your eyes, I wouldn't ask the question. <laughs> I mean, I thought I was lobbing you something to knock out of the park, man. No, man, no. You no. freaking had a four? I had a four. That's not, I mean, I mean could have been, I mean. I had a seven. Oh, well, I mean, it's not a it's not a competition. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, we should talk about the COVID of it all before we get into vacation too much because it's. I mean, we had, we that, had that contributed to it. We had planned vacations. I mean, I was going to freaking Disney World with my extended family, and like the first few weeks of quarantine, of course, that got obliterated. And then I was gonna I was gonna go home for July Fourth and see the the rest of my family. That got obliterated. Uh, I was gonna go up to Santa Cruz. I had booked a place up there. That was early on, earlier on in quarantine. That got obliterated. And then it got to a point where it's like, I'm just not, you know, we're at home, we're gonna be at home. I'm gonna go into the office the minimum amount of time with the minimum number of people and be absolutely as safe as possible. We don't go out and do anything. And when we do, we're doing the mask thing. I mean, all of that is still in full effect. Yeah. You're basically just staying at home, it's just a different home. So yeah, so we, we did like a an Airbnb at the beach and uh, so the, with like their cleaning certification and then we just hunkered down there. And we went south and uh, I mean, LA at least right now is, is, it's one of the hot spots. So technically, technically leaving LA and hunkering down somewhere else, I mean, you're, you're a little bit, a little bit lower risk, you know. This is a hot oh. spot, man. Um, so, but, I, but we are high risk going into that place. So, for the for the sake of everybody else, I still. But we're not because we've been isolated here. Now, okay. So it's like just being at home at the house that we rented, wearing a mask all the way to the beach to where we set up a spot that is then well distance beyond six feet from anybody else, and then. Um, getting in the water well, I will with just my, I will just say my family. A lot of. That was the game plan, that's a, what happened. A lot of my experience the entire time was 
man, this this would be really awesome if we weren't in a global pandemic. Like that, that's kind of, I was like, oh, that restaurant would be cool to go into. That store would yeah. be cool to go into. Yeah. This would be an awesome place to be, but there's this, you feel, you know, there's this, you're conscious of the fact that there's a pandemic going on. And so you you never are super relaxed until you're like seated on the beach. Right. The process of getting to the beach, it's like you're just kind of thinking about things that you typically don't think about. And so that's not what, I mean, that contributed to it not being as good of a vacation as vacations used to be before COVID. But the main thing that happened to me. Yeah, if that, I can't bring you to a four because just be, I mean, we're blessed to be able to, to go on a vacation yeah, yeah. and we so, know that. Uh, but the thing is, is that I have a I have a problem, I've talked about it before and I think this is pretty common. Like people, you tie expectations to things, whether it's a vacation, a project, whatever, but vacations are the things that most people tie a certain level of expectation to and you think about it and you, you fool yourself into thinking that like, oh, but when I go on vacation, that's gonna be a great week. Like, oh sure. yeah, that, that that vacation week at the beach, that, uh, man, that's gonna be good. Cause that's the point of it. And then I start thinking things like, um, well, I gotta, um, what am I gonna do on the vacation? Because I wanna make sure that I'm doing the vacation well, right? And so then, so what my sort of expectation was, and f first of all, I'm a lot more aware of this than I was say 10, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. where I unconsciously went into situations with all these expectations and then I was disappointed. At least I've gotten to a point where I know the way my mind works is you have these expectations, you need to set low expectations, you need to go with the flow, but I just find myself getting to the place where I've still got the expectations and the expectations for this vacation were, uh, I want to actually, I wanna get a lot of surf time in, right? I wanna surf, but I also wanna get my kids surfing pretty much for the first time, lock mm -hmm. it down a little bit earlier in the summer. And you know, me and you stand up paddleboard surf, and I've had this you, secret hope to yeah, be able you to You don't do, believe that counts. To regular, well, the, the thing is is that there's lots of places in the world that if you go, and you didn't bring your big ass paddleboard with you. You just you you don't have an option to surf. And then there's also a lot of really cool breaks uh, where you're not really supposed to. You're not even allowed to be on a, a, a stand up paddleboard in some places. So I was like, I would just like to have that in my arsenal of abilities, the ability to like surf. And I'm not talking about like you know hang ten or catch big. I'm talking about like an old man on a longboard, like just the bare minimum. Catching a wave. I, I get that. You want the versatility. So I was like, okay, San Diego. It's a, it's a, it's it's an easier surf town. You know, I, we were on this various beaches between L.A. and San Diego, but we were closer to San Diego, and it's just a, there's a it's easier to surf down there. It's less territorial. There's more there's more places to surf. There's less people. Whatever. So I was super excited about that, and we were like walking distance from a place that was a good place to learn. And I took my longboard that I bought, you know, this year down there. And day one, I go out and uh, it's frustrating. Like it's it's frustrating when you know that you could be already standing up on a paddleboard and surfing. Yeah. And but you're sitting there trying to stand up and like not getting, not balancing, falling off the board. Yeah, it kind of reminds me when we decided to start snow skiing even though we were both pretty decent at yeah, snowboarding. Exactly. Like I so know how like, to do this. You have to invest like a whole ski trip just to learn how to do something where you could be enjoying it doing the thing you already know how to do. Right. So day one was pretty frustrating. There were a couple of moments of hope. And the and the reason you ski is because as you get older it's like it's better on your Well it's harder on your knees, easier on your back for me. That's why I transitioned to skiing, but it's not that, good on the pelvis. And that's for me. why I transitioned to stand up paddleboarding because it's easier on the back for me. Case in point, day two, I go out and uh, I'm gonna. Part, I don't know exactly what is going on, but one of the things that has always happened to me, uh, it used to happen before I would go on a vacation or before there was a significant transition or in the midst of a transition, I would have my lower back act up and basically 
Your go, back would go out. Go back to what I call my ground zero injury, which is related to my herniated discs. It's in a very specific spot on the left side of my spine. And then, you know, 10 years ago when this would happen, even five years ago when this would happen, I would be out. I, I would be in pain for months when this happened. Now I've gotten to a place where I can experience that injury and then a few days later, I'm pretty functional or whatever. And now a week later, cause I'm about to tell you, I did hurt my back. Um, but the second day I wake up and first of all, the the X factor of any vacation is the bed, right? Mm. What is this bed gonna be like in this Airbnb? When you got a bad back, you're very sensitive to beds in general. And the softer the bed, the worse it is on your back. That's the case for a lot of people with back problems. I was like, man, this bed is unnecessarily soft. I love a soft bed. And I was like. My bed was too hard. I, I could should have swapped. I, could, I almost slept on the floor for most of the, most of the time. <laughs> but I didn't. I just took, the, there was a mattress topper. I took that off after the second night. But uh, got up that second day and I was like, man, my back is tight. But I did my, you know, all my stuff that I do to loosen up. Locke and I go down to the beach and second wave standing up and then like here I feel like, oh, there it is. Oh no, oh no, oh no. And then it's like a it's, a, it's a sharp pain, but then I'm like, okay, but no, I'm in better shape. Let me just go in, I'm gonna do some stretches on the beach like an old man. So you, so you rode two waves in the second one. Well, I didn't ride the wave. I was in the process of standing up when it went out on me. And then you, you, and you then fell I, over. And then I go, I swim in to the, the, the beach. I get on the beach, I do my stuff, and then it hits me very, very squarely and clearly. You're not going back out today. And so I like wave at Locke and I'm like, I gotta go in. He's like, okay, he stays out there <laughs> by himself. I walk back to the house carrying my board, which is not feeling great because I gotta walk like you know a quarter mile or so with this board. My Ooh, back is hurting because standing up on a it's an explosive act. Yeah, to, to to go from paddling on your chest to like to standing up on a board. I was trying to show Lincoln how to do that because there were foam boards that happened to be at the place we stayed. Because yeah. I don't own any of those. Because uh, you know I'm I didn't want to make that I didn't want to make that transition. But I'm like, hey, it's here, and I'm showing him on the beach how to yeah. do how to stand up, and it's a uh, it's explosive, it's a, and there's it's, there's, there's twisting involved too. You're, yeah, you're turning. Well, you're supposed to be turning your your hips. I don't know. I could imagine that it could really. Well, but here here's the, here's the thing. Ring your back, and you know I was talking about this in therapy because physical therapy. I I do you know I don't want to get into too much woo, and I don't really know exactly what I think about this, but I do know that there's a connection to emotional sort of pain and stress that manifests itself physically in ways that we don't quite understand. Okay. Uh, this has just been proven many, many times. Like I told you, every time I get ready to go on a vacation or I'm in the midst of a vacation, there were many years where I would, my back would, I could feel it tensing up, right? Because it's like the act of relaxing and, and, and it's very difficult for me to relax on vacation. We'll talk about that a little bit more lately, later. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> So I think the act of trying to relax a little bit plus the bed, plus the act of doing something, I don't know exactly what the pie chart is that contributed to it, but it was the perfect storm. But all that to say, I was immediately deflated, right? And again, and, and it felt like, cause I was like. Can't not, surf the rest of the week, I that was, was like, the main I, thing. I was like, am I gonna be able to surf paddleboard at all? Am I gonna be able to surf at all? for the rest of the week. And not and and this is uh, you know a very privileged problem, but also I was upset because the Airbnb which came with a hot tub, the hot tub wasn't working and they were like we can't fix it while you're there. Because it's the manufacturer said it's broken, it has to be replaced or something. So I was like, "Oh, I hurt my back and I also can't get into the hot tub to make myself feel better." Wah, wah. <laughs> you know. So you that's a four. You plummeted. Yeah, and what I was, was like, that lower than a four. And, and and I was no. Well, okay. So when it happened to me, as I was walking back to the house, thinking about the fact that my expectations have been thwarted, I was like, "Of course, this is what has happened, right?" Because, um, what do you mean? 
I'm saying that you like think, you think you deserve it. You deserve no, to be punished. No, no, it's not about being it's deserving. It's just like this is the perfect gift from the universe for, oh, for you, someone okay. who is br- who is bringing this this level of expectations. If what you really want to learn how to do is to accept things, to go with the flow, to not have all these expectations tied up in your experiences, but to let things happen to you, to let things come to you as a cuz even when I'm out there surfing, it's very difficult for me to have fun because I'm focused on doing it well. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you gotta get up and you gotta catch this wave. It's like I, I approach it like an athletic event versus like yeah. an, an, an enjoyable thing because there's this part of me that's just like, you gotta get good enough at this before you can enjoy it. If you mm-hmm. get good enough at it, then you can actually sit back and reap the benefits, the, the joy that comes from it. So long story short is my back got better enough to stand up paddleboard the very last day, I had a really good surfing day, caught a bunch of waves. It was it kind of redeemed the experience. But the fact that my expectations were kind of ripped apart, I didn't learn how to do regular surfing. I wasn't able to surf even on a paddleboard for two days after I hurt my back. It, it was almost like the vacation was a lesson and lessons aren't fun. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm having an incredible time doing the thing that I thought I was gonna do, I'm really just kind of sitting here wishing that I was doing the thing that I thought I was gonna do. It's interesting you say lessons aren't fun, but so do you think that you would have enjoyed your vacation more if you didn't see it as a lesson? That you just said, oh, I have an injury, now I gotta pivot to just watching Netflix the whole time I'm here. Uh, well, but, no, when that's, and I'll talk about that I'm sure later, you, because I'm, that is what I did, and, okay. I, and and that created another sort of weird but did the, emotional experience, too. Okay, dang, man. I'm very in touch with myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I, but seeing it as a lesson, you said lessons, lessons aren't fun, but I actually think that this mindset of accepting what happened to you as something to learn from didn't that help redeem it a little bit? No, I mean, it, yeah, yeah, it did, but it wasn't, you know, it's like there's, I was. It wasn't fun in, it wasn't fun in a recreational sense, but it was valuable. It's like the process, I some, I was re- reading this this book where uh, the woman was talking about the process of sort of transformation that takes place in people who are, who are trying to change. Uh, and the process of change, she uses the analogy of like leather you know, tanning a hide. Okay. And like, you know, at first it's just really hard. Uh, it's not pliable at all. It's like a, you know, a big potato chip. It's like rawhide, like what you would give your dog to eat. But the process of tanning and stretching and hanging it up, I don't know what happens to leather, but eventually it becomes nice and supple. But the, if you imagine yourself as this hide going through that process, you're being stretched and you're in the sun, it's not, Fun, but you're becoming what you're supposed to be becoming, and I know that's not what vacation. Yeah. Again, that's a not seat what va- for a cowboy's crotch. Right. That's not what vacation uh, is. Tr- t- vacation is traditionally like it's a break from the norm. It's a time to relax. It's a time to when you live a uh, yeah. We do. We have an incredible job. We're living the dream, but it's very busy, and there's constantly things that we have to engage with. Trying to disengage, which is difficult for me. For me, it was just that lesson of not getting what you thought you wanted, but getting what you actually needed. I'm just saying, when you ask that question from a from a on a scale of one to ten, I'm thinking the enjoyment factor. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. the long term value of it. It's a ten versus if I had a, gone down there and learned how to surf and it was awesome, it would have been a one in the long term value. But once the injury happened, seeing it through the lens of how can I grow here. It, it helped. Redeemed it. I mean. It redeemed it, but it, at it, least it you wasn't weren't... enjoyable. Okay, yeah, I, I, I get cause that. Because every day I was like, man, I wish I was surfing right now. And if I and, and thinking that, oh, even when I do surf, I'm gonna have to be on the stand-up paddleboard, I already know how to do that. That's <laughs> no fun. You know what I'm saying? That That's <laughs> how I was thinking about ironically, it. Ironically, that's when it should be fun, because that's what you said earlier. Right. That when you know how to, well, if it makes you feel any better, I offer, also suffered an injury. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I really did. Um, I, you know, I, I tried to psych myself up to low expectations. I was like, 
the psych yourself up the, to low expectations. Yeah, for the same reason, because yeah. you know, I always have an idea of what what the perfect anything is, you know, and so there's this standard that I'm constantly trying to meet, um, and bring my family along to meet that same standard. So I was just t- telling myself. Which you know se- severely complicates it when other people, you're expecting yeah, other right. people. Definitely. It, it, it makes so I'm like, it even you worse. You know what? The, the, this is very limited. We can't go out. To, we can't make a lot of plans because we're either going to be at home, we're going to order takeout, and we're going to go to the beach. And I'm, and I'm not going to put any timetable or we're not going to make any big plans that require being anywhere at a certain time or anything like that. And it was the, the most laid back vacation I've ever been on for that reason. I didn't even make the kids get up at a certain time. Oh, we gotta get on the beach. We gotta get a parking space. We're, n- we're gonna be so yeah. far away. I'm, I'm gonna have to tote everything for everybody. I'm gonna have to make two trips, three trips, and ugh, all this stuff I get worked up about. Uh, you know, it wasn't an issue. There, you know, there was, there was parking. There was, yeah. so it was definitely the most laid back vacation, I think. And having those ex- lower expectations really helped bring me to what I think I said a seven. But I did have an injury. I mean, the one, you know, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat all the foods I want to eat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring my my Ben and Jerry's. Like Christy got this Ben and Jerry stash, man. Even before we got to the beach, like we brought a cooler to make sure we had it. So like, we're watching. Of course, we're watching some Survivor. Once the Neils start, the Neils don't stop. Right. Like still, still on Survivor. season there, after season there's, there's after a lot. season, there's back a lot more. to back. We're just watching it because I told you. You should have started earlier and watched them all, but no. You, There's other like, shows. You're, you're the McLaughlin. And I'm gonna tell you, you about do that. It, <laughs> you do it differently. And I'm like, tonight's the night. I'm pulling out the Ben and Jerry's, and um, I hurt myself eating ice cream. <laughs> 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 uh, I mean, I'm talking, I'm talking blood. Oh, did you bite your freaking lip? No. I didn't get so excited that I started biting my tongue and my and my cheek and my lip and all the stuff that I that I do. I didn't do any of that. I ate the whole ice cream and man, it was like, it was so good. And Christy what flavor was, are you Christy was like uh, tonight dough. Do you, do you only get tonight dough? Well, the number one on our um, peanut, on our peanut taste butter test, world. You, you got to get that at Target only. Yeah, yeah, I can, can't find it. Um, so I'm enjoying it. Christy's like, how much of that? Because I had the pint. How much of that are you eating? And I like showed it to her and it was half gone. I was like, I'm stopping right here halfway, but this is my pint. There's another pint of the same stuff in there that y'all can share, and there's some stuff that I don't like that y'all can have, but this is my pint, and I'm eating out of it. One pint for the week. Um, I, also, I mean, that's not going that hard. I also ate out of some of theirs. When you, because you, when you talked about like I'm going to eat whatever I want, I mean, for me that would be, well, half a pint a night. Yeah, I, I didn't. I mean. I was eating lots of pizza, lots of Mexican food, lots of, I mean, all, I, I gained three pounds. Interesting. Like I actually did, yeah. I weighed. Um, Cause I'm pretty consistent in my weight. But anyway, so I'm eating the ice cream, I'm enjoying it, and when it's, when it's done, my mouth, which was very cold, <laughs> all of a sudden I realized, like my lip is hurting. And then I, I look down, and there's like some blood on my freaking Ben and Jerry's. Oh, well that's I'm definitely like, yours. <laughs> I hope it is. Don't share that with anybody. <laughs> yeah. The bloody Ben and Jerry's is dad's. And I'm I'm putting the last, taking the last bite out of my mouth and I'm realizing. I mean with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> I've been eating with a knife this whole time. I have, I think this is worse. I cut my lip with a spoon. The freaking, I was like, I've cut my mouth with this spoon. Only Link Neal is uh, on capable the, right of Right here on the side <laughs> on the side of my mouth. The man can cut it himself was bleeding. with a spoon. I had cut. Gather two- round, one dollar to see the man who can cut himself with a spoon. <laughs> Not only once. Step right up. Two places. What, how? Well. Had, it was a sharp spoon. I was like, yeah, it was a sharp, the, the edge of the spoon was sharp. Christy was like, oh yeah, sometimes, you know, spoon goes goes down in the garbage disposal. It gets sharp. And then it gets, <laughs> <laughs> and like it'll it'll like whack the edge a little bit, and I think that's what happened. So when I would pull the spoon out of my mouth, 
it would slice the edge of my, like where my lips come together on the left side of my cheek. Why are you putting it so far to the side? I'm just, you know, I'm getting every last <laughs> bit of ice cream off. And I slice. I feel a hundred people could eat with this spoon and you would be the one that would cut yourself with two it. Two slices. <laughs> oh two, and, it, and it wasn't just bleeding a little bit, brother. Uh, it was bleeding a lot. The mouth has a lot of capillaries. I mean, I had to run in there. I mean, I was like, man, am I gonna faint? I'm not gonna faint, I'm not gonna faint. I just grabbed a paper towel, I rolled it up like a cigar, and I put it in the edge of my mouth like a like gauze. Uh, and then we finished Survivor. And then we finished Survivor. And then in we, the, had, we had to pause it for dad to <laughs> save himself from the killer spoon. Yeah. So, I mean, but I you probably would have had surf. A, probably would have had an eight if you it wasn't. You could still for that. surf <laughs> with that bloody mouth. A lot more adventures to share. But first, let's sell some merch. Um, I'm actually not wearing the shirt that uh, we, I want to bring your attention to. I don't even know if the shirt that I'm wearing is still available. Cotton candy, Randy. Maybe it is, that's why you gotta go to mythical.com, but the shirt that I wanna tell you about that you may have seen me wear elsewhere is the Beans shirt. Um, it just says Beans on it. It's my favorite this shirt. This is established, what does it say? A st- it says established uh, in 1984. Beans were made in 1984 for the first time. So there, it's been correlated it just says to our mi- friendship. Mythical. It says beans, and I think it says mythical. Established, established 1984. Okay, yeah. It's a cool shirt. Uh, yeah, it's just gray with blue lettering. You know, beans. I like it. I like a good gray shirt. Man. Um, lots of things besides shirts. Most of my shirt. If I'm gonna go to a t-shirt, it's gonna be a gray one. Oh, I've got. I mean, I got so many gray things. It's just great. But if you have a gray shirt, you can't be the guy that wears gray shorts, because then you just look like you're in a uniform. I don't like gray shorts. No, I've thought about this because I love gray things, and I have gray shoes. You've thought about, and I have gray yeah, you hats, have, you and have I have gray short. shirts, but I don't have gray shorts. Maybe I should. Maybe I should switch it up. Go gray shorts, black shirt. Nope. Mythical.com. Get your bean shirt. Well, okay, so I said four, but I wanna, talk, I wanna talk about some of the, I wanna talk about what I think was the highlight for me because yeah. it, uh, there was some good things happened, right? Um, my mouth got better. In this, the next morning well, when I woke up, my mouth was very better. Very quickly because of all, all the, the blood flow. That's why it bleeds, why, and that's why it heals. But let me tell you, I, I inspected all them spoons before I went back yeah, you into you gotta throw the, those sharp spoons out or just put them down the garbage disposal. <laughs> Well, we washed it and I put I put it back in. I didn't feel I didn't feel good about throwing. Put away a warning spoon. on it. Um, yeah, I feel bad about that now. So another of my expectations, and maybe this sends it up beyond a four now that I think about it, because I was kind of just thinking about me selfishly. Um, again, I had an expectation that the kids would learn how to surf. Right, Shepard never has surfed. He's been on the paddleboard with me, but he's never surfed by himself. And Locke had been uh, a couple weeks before the vacation and had surfed. In near San Diego and had a good time. Um, but the first couple of times we just went out with uh, me and Locke and Locke's friend who's who's staying with us and chore boy, yeah, the one who just we, he carries everything for us and <laughs> no, he, doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. And um, it was really cool because first of all, Locke is better than me at regular surfing already. Cause you it's know, not saying much. Just a bit, which by that I mean his ability to pop up when he catches a wave and actually surf it in. I'm not saying he's like turning and like yeah all that, but he just you know he's an athletic kid and just immediately just got it and popped up and was just riding these waves in and was having an incredible time and was like motivated to go out with me in the morning and oh that's cool. So, and now it's something that we could do together, which he's like, when are we going again? Like now that we're back up, back at home. So that was super cool to see him kind of catch something like that. And then uh, we had one, we had one wetsuit that was a little bit too big for Shepard and a little bit too small for, for Locke's friend. And so they would, they would use this, they would share it. So we couldn't go at the same time. And Shepard, speaking of sleeping late, I mean, Shepard, the boy, would sleep till one o'clock. Oh wow! Yeah, if you my let kids, my my older kids can do that, and um, so Lando's at ten. He still he will not do that. It will change soon. Good. Um, so I mean, because this this has been like the last year or so for Shepard as he's like you know becoming you know he's about to turn twelve. So the uh, 
But I was like, okay, Shepard, we're gonna go surfing. Now I hurt my back on day two. Still had not taken Shepard surfing, but the next day I was like, okay, well I can't surf, but I can take you out there. So me and Shepard got up, we go out there and you know, I got my wetsuit on and I'm like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, in do, the water. I'm gonna do the things that I've seen other like surf instructors do, which is like what you said. All right, we're gonna get on shore. We're gonna put the board on the beach. I'm gonna show him how to pop up, right? Okay, he get he gets that pretty quickly. Gonna go out there. You know, they can't really paddle yet enough to kind of get themselves in a wave. So you push them into a wave. Yeah. So I go out there, and literally, like the second wave that he tried, I push him into the wave. He stands up, rides it all the way into the sand. Yeah, he's so light, and he he's athletic, yeah. and he's and he's fearless. Yeah, he's not scared of anything. But being that light helps a lot too. Oh yeah, if I could just have started at that age, man. Oh, just start now. Learn how to do things. This all is, you, all you twelve year olds listening. No, no, I, I'm saying the the any sport where your distance from said thing that you're supposed to like be on, like surfboard, skis. Golf. Snowboard, golf, your distance from the thing. The green, you're on the green. Well, no, your distance from the ball. It's like the taller you get, trust me, I'm tall, the harder it's gonna get. You wanna start early. Start short. And stay short. <laughs> you know, start short, stay short. Smoke <laughs> cigarettes so you won't grow. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, so the, but that was a proud dad moment to like see him and then to be like, oh, He's, he, he wants more, he's, he's back out. He's got this huge smile on his face, pushing in some more waves. And I said, all right, Shepard, you're on your own, man. I'm not gonna push you now. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna sit on the beach, and I'm gonna watch you. I go into the beach. Maybe take a nap. And uh, I'm watching him and he just catches a wave by himself. And then he goes back out and like, he was, you know, when you're learning how to surf, you kind of start in the whitewater area. Yeah. But the next time he just goes out, he just paddles past that and paddles all the way out with all the other surfers. And I'm like, okay, I don't know how this is gonna go. He didn't catch any waves while he was out there, but boy, he tried for like half an hour. Wow. And um, it's nice when they get motivated, self motivated. Yeah. And that's stuff. the thing is that, you know, he likes to play video games. He's really motivated to do that. Um, but he, he hasn't, he's done a lot of different things, but he hasn't like, been like, oh, this isn't the thing that I'm gonna do and I'm super self-motivated to do it. So it was really cool to see him do it. And, and again, it was like one of those things was like, this is really cool. Like I just watched him learn how to surf and now he's motivated to do it. And the rest of the week he went out with us and um, you know, ended up catching more waves. So while I selfishly wanted to be surfing and learning to surf myself, it was cool to see both of the kids kind of take to it. And now it's something that we can do together, which, you know, I was sitting out there on the beach and I was like, I'm a dad and I just did that. <laughs> you, well, you, it doesn't sound like you did much. Yeah. But you did enough. There's not, a, you don't, that's the thing, you don't really have to do much. Yeah, that's, that's the illusion. It's actually teaching a kid to surf versus teaching a kid how to ride a bike. Oh, ride a bike. Oh, yeah. That'll make you want to kill your kid. Surfing, totally different ball game. Super easy. Well, it depends, I mean. I took Lando out. I mean, he, he, he's he's a, he's more cautious. He's I, I'm not gonna say timid. I'll just say cautious. And I said, "Hey, we're gonna ride this surfboard like a boogie board. That's gonna we're gonna get you on this thing, get you going." And um, you know, the the first one, I I always do this. I got a little. Too aggressive. Too aggressive. Yeah. And I went out too far, and then the wave was a little too big, and I like, I said, stay. You're at the right place on the board. Uh, maybe you need to come back a little bit further. You know, the, you don't want the nose to dive in. And I, I pushed him on that wave right when we got out there, and he just like, it was chaos. <laughs> and then he comes up. Of course, this, I grab the board so the board doesn't hit him or something like that. And I'm like, all right, let's go back out. And he's immediately going in. <laughs> but I have the board. And the board it's is tethered to is him. tethered to his ankle. Right. That's how you catch him. And um, low dad moment for me was continuing to go out. Oh, yeah. I mean, like drag, it, drag his butt out there. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hold on, it, it, we'll do this differently. It was my fault. 
like, well, I I I screwed up, you know. I I got over aggressive, and then my response There's is what, where moment. I really screwed up. I was like, I was like, no, we're going. We're, you're not giving up. You're not giving up. And of course, he couldn't go. I wasn't dragging him out. I stayed in place, and he realized that he couldn't go in. I was like, you're not giving up. We're going to do this together. And he was upset, and he won. And we went back in, and he went and like basically told Christy how big of a <laughs> Asshole, I was, and it was. You know what? Totally true. Um, but it was just I wanted it for him so badly right. that, like, I did. I was doing it for me, not for him. And it, especially when it didn't work out, then it was I wasn't being sensitive at all, and I feel horrible about it. And so I took a few minutes to process that, and I was like, "Hey," and I apologized. I look him in the eye, and I'm like, "I didn't do that right. I I want." I want you to try again, but the, I, I know you like things to be explained to you so that you can, it, you can know what to expect and I didn't do that. And it, so I was like, basically let's have a do over. And you know what? After a few minutes, he was like, let's. Oh, let's, the same let's, day. Let's try it. So yeah, like 20 minutes later, we went back out and I, and I, I did it the right way. And, um. By the end of it, he was like, "Maybe I'll try to get up on my knees or something." But it, but it was a positive experience, and it was better than being on a boogie board because you go so much further when you're yeah. as light as he is. Um, I think that, that I I had forgotten about that until I just told you because that was that was kind of the low point of vacation because the low point that I remembered was the point where I got angry that I wasn't <laughs> another I wasn't another referring one. to that. So I guess there were two of them. Uh, we pack everything up from the beach, and like I had to take the boards back up. And you know, I'm in charge of the biggest stuff because I we gotta go up this long steps up the side of this cliff to get back to right, the car. Right. And the goal is still everybody pull your weight so that we only have to make one trip. Right. But I got and I got the big stuff, and so we get back up there. We get everything loaded in. Everybody's everybody's pulling their weight. Everything's going good. Somebody um, left something. We get back home. And I take my sunglasses off at the house and I'm reaching for my regular glasses. And I'm like, where are my glasses? And I'm saying this to Christy. In the Pacific Ocean. I'm like, where are my glasses? I, she's looking at me like, why are you asking me where your glasses are? And I'm like, my glasses, I had a speaker. I took, the speaker had a case, because I didn't have gla a glasses case. I took this speaker out, and I, because we were playing the speaker on the beach, and I put my glasses in that case. And then you guys packed everything up. It's their fault. And, so that I could get. <laughs> it's not your fault. The big stuff back up there. So did anybody see my glasses? It's it's like why are you asking me? Well, because you you guys are the ones who packed everything up, right? And because we're we're back at the house now, we you know we've driven the I don't know ten minutes back or whatever, and so I'm mad. Hmm. I'm very mad. I'm like, these. I mean, I need my glasses to see. I have contacts. I have enough contacts to last the rest of the week. I could just be no glasses, man. But but you need the glasses. Who's Link eventually. without glasses? It's like I, I bought a second pair of my glasses. Well, there you go. Identical to my current pair, so that if something happened to them, I would have them to like to be Link. Yeah, I'm the guy with. I'm the one with the glasses. Well, don't be so attached to it. I mean, I'm getting older by the second. Well, right. I, that I mean, <laughs> I'm the I, I'm the one with the gray hair and glasses. You're currently man. the one with glasses. Uh, the only one with glasses. But those glasses, my backup glasses, were stolen two years ago from my car in my own freaking driveway. Oh, man. Screw you, person yep. who did that. They're prescription. You can't use them anyway. Yeah, jackass. And I never got them replaced because they're expensive. They still anything else? Uh, some sunglasses. Uh, Christy sunglasses. Those are prescription. Oh, mm -hmm. Not my sunglasses. So I'm mad. I'm like, I've, they've got to be on the beach. So I go back. I drive back and I'm 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 just so mad. I'm like, this is not this is not vacation. 
And then I'm, did, I, did, I did, had to find a place to park. But did anybody say something like, oh yeah, I, I did not grab that. They were like, he was well, like, here's the speaker, the speaker's in the case. They put the speaker back in the case. And the glasses were not and in the, the case. So I was like, they, you know, they didn't care about my stuff when they were packing it up. It's like, I, I trust my family to care about everybody's stuff when they're packing it up, mm -hmm. not that, just my stuff. That's where you went wrong. Yeah, you can't trust your family. I had to find a place to park. I'm I'm putting on a mask. I'm I'm running down all these steps, trying not to break my neck. I get down there, and the tide comes in yeah. so far, all the way to the cliffs, all the way to the cliffs. If you leave anything on and, the beach, yeah, it's gone. Well, or almost. <laughs> I get down there, and I run back to the spot, and I'm like, I'm exasperated because the tide, literally, the tide is coming over the place where we had set up. No one else was there, and I'm like. I'm looking around and I look to the right, like go, look into the ocean. You're not gonna believe this. My glasses were floating away in the ocean. You're joking. Yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> My glasses weren't there at all. Oh. I was so mad. They had already been taken. But I had this vision. The ocean had taken them? I had a vision that my glasses, that that's what was gonna happen. I was gonna get there just in time, even though it had so much time at a Your glasses float? Glasses don't float. Well, some do. The float in the, the ocean, they don't float. I think they're even more buoyant in the ocean. I don't. One time I, I forgot I had on sunglasses and I went back into the ocean because I was hot and I dipped my head totally in the water and when I came up, it was a lot brighter and I realized yeah. that I had just lost my sunglasses right there yeah. one second you, ago. You'll never find them. And I, re and I just, I never. instinctively reached down, gone forever. Oh yeah. Those are my green sunglasses that, that, that people post on Twitter when I look like I'm like smiling real big, like I'm the sun yeah. and I'm wearing those glasses. You could probably get a replacement I'm, for those. I you miss know what those they need freaking glasses. Two little inner tubes that go around the glasses right there. Two yeah. little donut inner tubes. We should sell those. Like wings. Like yeah, they go like right on the edge. Swimmy wings, and then they hook to cords, which go behind your head, and you're just like a not even that a dad golfer. You don't even have to do that. Yeah, because they'll float. You let them go. But you know what? They do make a thing that is a floaty football size, football shaped thing for your keys that you could attach to glasses too, like boat keys. Boat keys. So. I asked the people, you know, you hate having to ask the people on the beach, hey, did you happen to see some glasses? Uh, yeah. No, they so, didn't. Yeah. I make this walk of shame back up, to, up, up the stairs. I sit in the car and I'm like, I don't wanna drive home. I'm just, I'm so I, mad at I can't them. See. Because can't, they don't care. Right, can't even see my way home. Well, I have my sunglasses on, yeah. they're prescription. And then I was like, dang it. I remember taking those glasses and putting them in the case. And then I was like, but I think they were my sunglasses. And I think my regular glasses are in my sunglasses case right here in the console of the car. And I opened it up, took, out, they were. took out my sunglasses case and they just laughed in my face. Yeah. I mean, it. I've never seen glasses laugh at a person, but I felt it. It's like <laughs> But that's a beautiful moment when you find the thing that you thought that you lost. I mean, you feel stupid for having I was so convinced down to the I was, beach. Well, I was so convinced that it was my family who collectively did this. So I came home well, and I told you, them the same story I told you, except I, I, I stopped at the part where I got him out of the ocean. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I'm about, I'm about to say, man. You know, they there's no what reason they have to know what happened. <laughs> no, I told him the truth. I mean, th see, that's the thing. It's not about being perfect. It's about being penitent. And I'm glad that Lando responded to that. And I mean, Christy was like, "Now you need to tell the whole story if you're going to tell that story." <laughs> yeah, that always happens when I lose something. And I've actually learned at this point to um, not. Find, to not just immediately try to find a family member. I mean, that, that's one of the great things about having family is that you've got that many more people to blame things on. Yeah. Um, but it just, it's, it's always a losing game. 
you know, it's always a losing game. It's not fun, even if it is their fault to blame stuff on people. And what but is that? When you what lose is, stuff, it's almost always your own fault. That Christy has is I've been listen. I've been looking. I've been retracing my steps. I've been thinking so hard. I've been looking for the thing, and it's like, uh, and then she's like, "Here it is." You know what is that superpower? It's just like, and then that trains you to not look, because if she can magically find it, well, I'm not gonna waste time looking for something that you can magically find. Right. And I tell her that, and I she's like, it, is magic. Well, it doesn't work that way. The magic only works if you've exasperated yourself to the point of exhaustion and frustration. Um, it helps if you don't blame anybody, because the magic doesn't work if you blame, if I blame Christy, her magic doesn't work. And if I don't look, her magic doesn't work. But if I, if, you, I, if I put in the effort and then I get exasperated and I go to her on hands, oh baby, I need you, baby, I can't, I can't find my, I can't find my glasses. I, that's what it takes. I, I know I put them in the wrong place, but can you work your magic? Then it'll work. What you want that's to do is learned. you want to enlist the help of your family without blaming them. We were talking about bounty. That's the only way my family's gonna get involved. My kids. You can yeah. have my bloody ice cream if you find my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, iron, is that higher iron the other, content. The other thing that, that uh, happened to me, speaking of watching television, is you watch Survivor. Um, Still love it. Now, I'm sure you suffer from a, a similar thing. Uh, no, a, don't be sure. A lot of people struggle with the whole aspect of not doing, right? So yeah. e even while on vacation, I'm still thinking about accomplishing something. It might be, oh, you're gonna learn how to surf properly. Um, and I think that, you know, going back to like the Enneagram one and the Enneagram three, <clears throat> there's a lot of similarities in the way that we approach things. Uh, you might want to uh, make sure your vacation goes perfectly. And I might want to Unlock and achieve. Accomplish something on my vacation, but they they manifest themselves in pretty similar ways a lot of times. So for me, and this is a common workaholic problem, I feel it's very difficult for me to enjoy a vacation because I feel worthless if I look at a day on vacation and I'm like, you didn't do anything. Like you didn't learn how to do anything, you didn't like achieve something, like, cause even doing something, like having a good time is achieving something. Mm -hmm. If you just sort of laid there, you kinda got up late, and then you watched a lot of television and then dinner rolled around, and like my wife is really good at just sort of embracing that and enjoying that and being able to just be and that being something that is fun and enjoyable, mm -hmm. whereas I just developed this sense of worthlessness uh, and like I have no value because again, my tendency is to attach my value to my accomplishments, something that I'm unraveling like a giant knot <laughs> Yeah. since I've been in therapy. I've had that problem a lot with just with COVID in terms of work because we're, we're hamstrung in a lot of ways in terms of what right. we can do and like what we're working on that leads to well, stuff. And, that, and that's another thing that happens to me when I go on vacation, not only am I thinking, well, you're gonna learn to surf, but I also think that like, oh, you're also going to have this thought about some project that we're working on. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have a breakthrough. You're gonna come up with a new yeah. idea. You're gonna write a song. Like I had this secret hope and, and, and because of my personality, many times that's what vacation is filled with. There's like, oh, I wrote two songs or, you know, it's a, mm -hmm. I came up with an idea. I did this little write up and I do that in in part because that's where I get my self worth, right? So I mean, it's 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 good if you're trying to be an entertainer, but it's also bad. Hey, you, <laughs> I, I I'll veg out over here. You you keep going with that, <laughs> and uh, but it's bad for your own mental right. health. So, but one of the things that I found myself doing, especially after I got hurt, is you know I talked a lot about how Jesse and I had watched uh, Married at First Sight. Talked about that a few podcasts ago. And you it, turned a lot of people on to that, and it's I, yeah. You're welcome. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And uh, well, you're definitely not going to know about this. So the th now, my wife and I. Well, let me say, my wife watches a lot of trashy reality TV, and she has roped me into it. And I fall for it hook, line, and sinker, even if I am trying to resist it. And the thing that we ended up getting into, which this is even more popular than Married at First Sight, 
is we started watching 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. And I guess this is the most recent season. Now you've seen this guy, Ed. Um, you may not know that he is Ed, but if I showed you a picture of Ed, you'd be like, oh, that's the guy from all the memes over the past couple of months. Oh, okay. And I, I can barely say what 90 Day Fiance is. 90 Day Fiance is a show about people who are, there's one person who's in the US and then one person who is in a foreign country and they are getting married in order for the person to get a green card. Oh, this is the thing that the only, Lincoln was watching PewDiePie watch one of these. Yeah, yeah, it's super popular. And so I watched it with him. That's the only way I've seen the show. And Felix watched it, I told you this, he watched the episode segments out of order. Yeah. And he cared so little that he just, he didn't even, he was like, oh, I'm watching these out of order. The story was out of order. Like they got in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, it was, but which I found hilarious. But there's like five different versions of the show because there's 90 Day Fiance, but then there's 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. And then there's. So what's the before? So you're, before the 90 so, days is a different show. So this is them meeting the people who they might have then gotten engaged to. And then the 90 Day Fiance is like the, after they've gotten engaged and is it gonna work out? So I don't even know how old this is, but it's the same people that I've seen in the memes. So it's relatively recent. So they shot, they docu documented, they these documented them meeting for the first time and dating basically yeah. before they got engaged, yeah. but they didn't air any of that. So they had a spinoff show because they had so much footage that was like a prequel. It's absolutely incredible. Now, you have to be a certain kind of personality, but the, based on the popularity of this show and what I see on the internet, oh, there's a lot of people who fit this personality type that get drawn into this kind of thing. Because you, it's the same reason I watch The Bachelor or anything like that. You just can't believe that people are capable of this type of behavior. And you just keep watching it. And I know that there's some sort of thing going on that's just like, I feel like by watching these people be themselves, it makes me almost feel, it makes me feel separated and a little bit sane. It's like, I would never do that. So it makes you feel good because mm -hmm. you're kind of separating yourself from the actions of these people. I As don't opposed know. to it making you angry and frustrated that they're like making dumb decisions. Uh, it makes me angry and frustrated, but I'm more blown away. Like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna, if you're gonna watch 90 Day Fiance, before the 90 days, spoiler, I'm gonna spoil some things, so just spoiler alert. Um, but the thing that we, okay, so first of all, there's Ed and there's Rose, right? And Ed is this like 55 year old dude from San Diego who has a very, I'll just say, he is, his look is very distinct. And that's why he's kind of become popular in these memes. And, okay. and then Rose is like a 20 something year old, like 23 years old from the Philippines. Their relationship is bonkers, <laughs> but very entertaining. Are you are you looking him up? Ed and Rose. Yeah, and j j Rosemary. Yeah, Rosemary. So you know that guy. He's, oh yeah. Yeah. So that oh. guy. Yeah. He's in he's in everything, right? And he's like, there's a famous scene where he like sits down next to her at the pool, and he's like, "You're my." He's like. You're my vision, or I can't remember what it is. It's just a bunch of memes because because the things that he says, and then the way that she talks to him back to him is just phenomenal. Now, <laughs> like she's younger than his, she's younger than his daughter, and so the he's daughter got was slick, he's he's a large man, yeah, with slick backed hair and like he's not never clean shaven, and his yeah he's um his head just kind of goes into his shoulders, right? And I think that's why. You know, he's got that very a distinct physicality that people have, uh, you know, people have locked into. Now, okay. Now, let me tell you about this other guy. Okay. Oh, another guy. This is the thing that kept me. They and the freaking TLC producers. They're so good. Because <laughs> let me just say, each one of these episodes is an hour and forty minutes long. What? I think that's right. This is the rejected. I'm watching this, is this the prequel footage. I'm watching this on I think TLC.com. I don't know. Jesse's doing it. There's it's on the Apple TV. I'm sitting through. There's commercials. I'm watching commercials. Like there's six commercials in a commercial break. Oh, you watch commercials? There's no way you can't. If you want to, I guess there's maybe unless you want to buy the season on Amazon. I don't know how. I'm just. 
I'm just trying to give you a picture of just how much I had succumbed to reality TV. I'm watching commercials again. I'm buying things that I'm seeing, you know, oh, Swiffer. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. No, I didn't. But you thought about it. Apparently. But it's gone in my brain. I'll oh, tell yeah, you that. Yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah. buy it at some point. Somebody just heard you say it and, and the ads are increase working. the chances. Hey, of- advertising works. If it doesn't, then me and you are going to be Trouble. broke. So let me just, so there was one day where we watched, I don't know how many episodes back to back, but I guarantee you it was seven hours of this show. I've never watched this much television in one sitting. And I was taking breaks and like eating, but I kept coming <laughs> freaking back. And Hold we on. and we didn't even pause it. We would go downstairs and do something, and it would just be keep rolling. And then because you don't really have to follow that closely. <laughs> but the story that I so, could not I uh, could not escape from. Can I ask you something? You can ask me anything you want. At the at the seven at hour one, I hated I hated myself at minute seven. You don't understand. I hated myself but the did you whole know, time. Did you know you were like, "Oh, this is happening. We're I, doing this." I actually thought to myself, did you and, ever I, told, make a and I told Jesse this like five hours in. I was like, "This is," and I'm not I'm I, I'm not making light of this. I was like, "This is what it feels like to be addicted to drugs." Oh gosh, because. I, I was like, you can imagine that like you keep going back to this thing and you know that it's not good for you and you don't even really like it, but you can't stop. I was like, I have a whole lot of empathy for people who are addicted to drugs right now. Is it- <laughs> I'm addicted to TLC. <laughs> Hold on. And I'm about to tell you why. Is it because of a, you wanted to find out what happens? Yes. To a, okay, okay. <laughs> Well, I mean, they got engaged. That's what happens. Uh, uh, it's well, before oh, the ninety dude, days, dude. You don't. Even, I'm about to blow your mind. You know what's going to happen. You don't. You don't. You don't. Especially in one particular case, right? So there's all kinds of things. Like there's one woman who is basically being catfished by this dude, and you know, as the viewer, that she's being catfished. Okay. You know that this dude's not real, but. She's so convinced that, and you can't stop watching someone in their delusion. And it's kind of sad because I know that the producers and everyone knows that this person is in a delusion. And you, sh- it's like you remember the famous. There's a famous. They didn't tell her. There's a famous photograph from an ethical standpoint. There's a, there's multiple photographs of like um, really difficult things to see, like a child who's starving or somebody who's yeah. been injured or. And there's a person who takes the photograph, and there's like this journalistic ethic, which is I don't intervene, I just observe. Mm-hmm. And then people find out, oh, you took this picture, but you didn't help this kid or whatever. Uh, there's a certain aspect to it where you're like, you you kind of want to just be like, you know, hey, I got this isn't real, but you know that the producers understand letting them live out their delusion is this in intensely entertaining thing that you can't stop watching. Now, one particular delusion that is I think the key reason I kept going back. There's a dude named I know we're going a little bit long, but I've got to tell you this. You know what? There is no perfect length. Right. There's um, nothing to you don't need to You know what? Maybe you don't need to tell the story because you feel like you need to achieve <laughs> the end of the story. No, 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 no. <laughs> you have got to hear this. So, there's a guy named David who is from Las Vegas. Okay. He's in his 50s, I believe. Maybe, I, yeah. let's just say that. He might be 60, I don't know. This guy uh, ha- goes to these dating services, online dating services, where it's a, it's a site where these Russian women, and I think maybe in this case it was a Ukrainian woman, um, uh, they're on the site and you see a picture of them and you can begin chatting with them. Not video chat, text chat okay. only. Okay. And and you know that, uh, do they basically want to you know, come to America? Well, let's go, we'll hold your horses. Okay. Stay in, stay in the Ukraine for a second. So you chat, text chat with this person who by the way does not speak English and so everything that you're saying is being translated into Ukrainian I guess and vice versa. So you're not even, there's a language barrier but it's sort of overcome by this text tool. Yeah. And you pay by the minute. 
This guy, first of all, it comes it comes to light that again, spoiler, it comes to light that he's been chatting up lots of women over the years and that this is basically the extent of his adult relationships, at least for the past 10, 15 years. Oh. And this one woman, Lana is her name. Now Lana's not making any of the money that you, that he's paying for the phone call. She gets paid, yeah, yeah, she is. Oh, she gets paid to talk to him? Well, she's, she gets paid by the site. Oh. How, why would she do it if she's not getting paid? To find a date. No, 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 no. This is her job. Her job is to go on this site and to talk to multitudes of men who want to chat with this oh. pretty blonde Russian lady. Oh, oh, okay, so it's like, but it's not just, it doesn't have to be, it's like a, what was that? It's like the sex line. Yeah, but you're but you're text but it, chatting. But it's now. But it's not just about the sex. Let me sex just talk. let me just say a couple of things. So as I'm watching, I thought this, it was a I thought it was just a dating line, but it's not. It's a service. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, it, it, you're he's paying half a million dollars. Oh gosh. Okay. Over the course of the years, okay, to chat with these women, and for seven years he's been chatting. Now, first of all, he's never seen any. He's just seen the picture and then chatted. So. Everyone watching knows that this woman is almost assuredly not the person that he is talking to, right? It's just some dude named Boris who, who, who's talking back to him, right? Could be AI. But he is convinced that they are in a relationship. He considers her his girlfriend because that's what she does on the, uh, she mm. acts as if she's in a relationship with him, right? So for seven years this goes on. Now over the course of the seven years, and this is all before you before we're seeing it. He has been too I don't know if again, I know you can Ukraine is not Russia. I don't know which one he went to, but he I think maybe he went to the Ukraine. I'll just say that. 3 times to meet her, and every single time he has met her, she's come up with an excuse. Now let me explain. Mm. He only communicates with her through the service even when he's going to meet her in the Ukraine. And so like he'll be like, why can't I just get your number? And she, and she gets mad and she's like, only through the chat, only through the thing. You, so he's paying her to arrange a meeting with her and every time he goes over there, paying him on his own dime, she's not there because an excuse comes up. My brother died or what? Like she's got all kinds of excuses and we know the producers know, the audience knows, this guy is in the depths of a delusion. It's sad, but you're just like, how far is he gonna go? Because when we're watching the show, he's talking to her and he's like, I'm going back, I'm going back over there and I'm gonna meet her and this time she's gonna be at this train station or whatever. So you see him go over there. This was the first time cameras followed him over yeah, there? Yeah, but you see him talk, his friends like try to have interventions with him like, oh, we're gonna get a shot of you and your two friends at this bar and you're talking and it's like, David, I, you know, I really think this is a scam. And he's like, I don't believe it's a scam. It's, and he has this weird sort of robotic way of approaching it where he's okay. not gonna listen to reason, right? So other people have tried to intervene. Multiple people, okay. his friends. That, he, that, and even a, even a Russian helps lady. helps the producer's case a little bit. A Russian lady who is was on the services that he met at one time is telling him that this is a scam. And he meets her when he goes over there. And oh. she and she's since got married to somebody else and she's out of the game now. But so he goes back over there for a fourth time. Of course, she doesn't show up. He comes back home. And then, you know, a couple hours later, I'm still in the bed, I'm still watching this. He's going back again. Uh, yeah, why are you doing I can't I don't and I'm like I can't believe you're watching no, this. I'm well I'm also following like five other couples at the same time, but I just this one in particular I was like I just don't how is it possible that yeah. he's going there yeah. for the fifth time? Mm. And then he's like okay, she's supposed to be here at 11 o'clock. He still never talked to her through anything but the chat. Yeah. And this very distinct blonde woman. Spoiler alert. Don't listen to what I'm about to say if you want to enjoy this yourself. She's there. What? The woman from the pictures shows up and hugs him. And I'm just like, having invested so much time into this and feeling so worthless, it was like another hit. It was like, what? it was all of a sudden like, ah, this was all worth it. What? But hold, she was an actress. 
No, I, that, they just brought in the, so many things were going through my mind. I was like, did the TLC producers like find this woman from the pictures and say, hey, will you act like it was you this whole time? Yeah, no, just no. make his day. It was her, but she, when they interviewed her, it was very clear that she was continuing to carry on the I, this. She wants the money. She wants the gifts from him, and it seems that she wants the ability to come to the U.S. I think. At this point, where I stopped watching the show, which was the tell-all, which was like during COVID, where they're all on video chat. Oh wow! So like after the after the ninety days, she didn't even show up for the for that. And he was like, "I haven't spoken to her in six days." I think the enga- they got engaged. They, they got, got engaged. engaged, and I was just like, "So she's also she's also maybe an addict too." Like she whatever he's I think giving she just, her, she's addicted to money, man. Okay. But it was, I had to and follow that, this that story. that becomes a 90 day fiance episode. I guess, <laughs> but it was so like, I don't know what the moral of it is. I mean, for, for, for it's, me, it's, it's tough. I don't, for me, it's just like, I can't let this happen unless I'm on vacation, right? I feel worthless. I hate myself for doing this. I don't know why I'm so invested in finding out if this woman's real. I don't know what's gonna happen with Ed and Rose. I mean, Ed told Rose that she needed to shave her legs and that she had bad breath. And it's like, I really don't like the way that he told her that. <laughs> but how's she gonna respond? And then like, oh, is, what's her name gonna find out that Williams is not a real dude, that she's being catfished? Like, you just, you find yourself so invested in this. And I understand, but, I think all right, the, the all moral right. of the story oh, with this, for David though, I think is if you have a delusion, just follow it to the end of the yellow brick road. And Cause you're may, probably right. It, it may come true. You're probably right. Now listen, I'm not shutting this down. Cause I got. Questions. I'm, I got, I'm, I'm flooded. You should just I'm watch flooded it. with memories associated with this. So. Hold on, you've been I don't talking even, to a I don't, Ukrainian woman I don't on the care if this goes, you know what? This may be a part two. Oh, or you know oh, what? Don't, 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 don't just go blow it. Let's just blow it open. Uh, okay. Every time you get so invested in a freaking trash show, it becomes an episode. I think I need my own podcast where I just talk about reality TV. <laughs> Can we do that? Wait, am I not invited? I mean. Somebody's gotta, you, but, somebody's gotta tell you you have a problem and that you just can't give in to this. See, you, you need to take a breath. No, but if I could make money off of it, then I start to feel like I'm worth something. Like if I could take my addiction to TLC and other things like it, and turn it into uh, a paying project. Then all of a sudden, oh, this okay, that's good. You can this makes sense. It validates your addiction. But spending seven hours, I mean, this is like I, I this is like those people who sit down and watch all three of the Lord of the Rings back to back to back. Which I, I'm just not that kind of person. I cannot do that. No, but it's not because it's not Lord of the Rings. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, it's a it's. Far from it. It's real people that have been just marionetted through producing and editing for your, for you to feel sorry for them or feel better about yourself. Or I, all the psychology is, it could be troubling. But it does remind me um, when we started producing Commercial Kings. So we made the pilot. Yeah, with Reveille, we worked with Todd, who brought us in and, and produced that. And like, we had a producer right. um, who worked on Survivor, actually. Uh, shoot, well, his name is on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Fernando. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Fernando yeah, yeah. was the one who's what? Like, we were we were we were filming the pilot episode in the in the mountains of Asheville, North Carolina, and with Heavy Hill, the trash man, yeah, a garbage collector. And then we had some downtime, and we hadn't talked talked about it ahead of time. And then all of a sudden, Fernando's like, I "Want to? We want to set up some some uh, OTF interviews. We're like, OTF on the fly interviews. Mm-hmm. It's like you know how on like reality sh- competition shows and stuff like that, they'll like have confession cams or the, they'll be yeah. talking to a producer. And we hadn't thought about this at all. Hadn't thought about it at all. And he was like, "It may not be part of the show, but let's just do it." And and then we made a decision. We were he wanted us to do them individually, and well, we didn't feel good about that. I remember, but we did it. And I remember he um, he set up a shot of me um, standing in front of Heavy Hills 
shed in his backyard where he had his pet mule back then. Yeah, I remember this. And um, then you had a little downtime while he interviewed me, and I remember when he interviewed you, I was like watching, I was like, what's it? I think he interviewed you first. I was like, how's this gonna go? And here we were, we like to be in control. It was our show, we were, you know, we were producers on the show too. And yeah, executive producers. Executive producers, and we were producing the commercial within the show, so it's like, we had our hands in all of it, yeah. and um, uh, it felt a little weird being interviewed by Fernando, who like, in w- in one sense worked for us, but then he was interviewing us, documenting the process of us making these commercials, so like, he would he would throw things at us and we would talk about it, and then they, and then that ended up being cut into the episode. Um, but then when we went to, all of that was a tangent, by the way. Oh, you're getting somewhere. But it was like, well, I guess we we became, that was where I started to feel like we were actually- Exploiting? In, no, we were in a reality television show. Yeah, you know, Commercial Kings was a show documenting us making a commercial, but we never thought of it that way. We thought of it as we're producing a show that shows how we make the commercials. But what Fernando tried to achieve was a level of detachment from what the how we were going to be presented and what we're processing in this in, and in and time. and let our process and our point of view not become just editorial, but become something that happened on screen. And it's difficult when the people that you're doing that with are really self aware and also producing the show. Yeah, but meaning, we're meaning us. We're, 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 we're pretty good at, at separating ourselves. So it's from like that. when he'd ask us a question. Yeah, half half the time we were thinking. What is the best way to answer this question to be entertaining, but also connect the dots so that in the edit room we can tell the best story? And we would and that we would be way better at that now than we were in 2011. Oh yeah, we weren't good at it. No, no. But if we would have just let go and trusted Fernando and just answered his questions, which we would do now, which we would do now, we understand how to be ourselves. Yes, a lot more than we did yeah. in the early days, like right now. Yeah, I you know there's so many times I wish we could go back and do Commercial Kings again. And I think that was a part of it. It stuck in our crawl that like we were doing these on the fly interviews. And that's and, the part of the show I don't was, like watching. It was reduced. I, I don't like watching those interviews. In series though, and this is what I was originally getting to, but it's, it, it, so it wasn't a tangent, it's a continuation of my thought. In series we worked with a different production company. We worked with Joke Productions. Yeah. Uh, Reveille, the, the company that, um, that funded the show and sold it and produced the pilot, they basically said we need to bring in somebody else who who does this day in and day out, yeah. who can do it on a tighter budget. Yeah, uh, Joke Productions um, was Joke and Biagio. They're a married couple, mm-hmm. uh, um, and Joke is her name. She's like, for some reason, she's like Belgian or something, and yeah, and so Joke doesn't mean funny, ha ha, over there. But it works well. It translates well. I made all that up. I actually don't know. Why they called her joke? That's her name. Was that right? Yeah, it didn't name. mean funny, haha, in Belgium. I don't think so. I think it's just a name. Okay, maybe I wasn't joking. Sometimes I say things just because they might be cool to say, and then I realize I'm accessing a memory that I didn't know I had. Oh well, that's part of life. I remember the first episode we shot with them was "Make Me a Pro Wrestler." Mm. That was the name of the business we were doing the commercial for. We aired them all out of order. The Heavy Hill pilot episode aired somewhere in the middle. The Make Me a Pro Wrestler didn't turn out, it wasn't, it was a dynamic commercial. It had a lot of action, but it didn't have a hook and it wasn't a great commercial. It didn't come together. But we learned how to be wrestlers and you freaking, with your back and everything, suplexed me. And it hurt my back, by the way. (laughs) Yeah, it did. Um, But we tried to get the guy who was called the Hobo, right? Yeah, his name, he was, his, Wrestling persona was the hobo. We said we interviewed them all, and and we wanted to platform. Bra- Brandon was his name. Yeah, yeah, and he. I think he he's still involved in wrestling at some point. He was up until recently because uh, our, our buddy Sievert, who 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 helped produce uh, Buddy System second season of Buddy, who was one of the writers on Buddy System, the showrunners, um, had a connect. His son had a connection to the world of sort of amateur pro wrestling. And so we kind of kept up, and we actually f- talked about this moment when we tried to get the hobo to, to change, change his, his persona, persona to the baby. And we said on camera, we thought it would be entertaining. It would be an entertaining beat to mess with these people's personas to make them more marketable. And so 
on camera, it's like we knew, okay, the big moment is when we tell Brandon. To shave his head. That he needs to shave his head. And, and he had wear, really long hair. And, and it wear, was his signature for the hobo. And wear a diaper. And he was just gonna be a, a bald man with a diaper. And, that, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I felt horrible about this because that goes, I mean, it, in my mind, that goes a step beyond what they're doing on TLC. TLC is like, I'm gonna let this person flounder in their delusion and, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna film it for entertainment. And all of our we commercials. We were trying to manipulate. Well, all of our commercials that really took off, it was taking things that were true and things that came out, that we worked out of the woodwork to become all of those commercials. Um, you know, like Coleman Liquidation, that epic and honest mobile home commercial. Everything that he says is something that he told us and then we just scripted it out. Um, but then Joe and Biagio, started to try to teach us that it's not, you know, we didn't go with this docu-reality thing. We went with this, they made it more reality TV. You gotta produce like, it. Let's have an, we need to have an entertaining beat in act one. You guys make it make a great commercial, that's act three. But if they don't, they gotta get hooked in act one. And then There's gotta act, be some stakes. In act two, this is a comedy. You gotta say some funny stuff. And so putting these people in these situations where it's like they have to respond to us telling, a dude to shave his long hair and his and his beard, right? Yeah, yeah everything. Yeah, because he ha he had hair like you do now and a beard. Maybe he didn't ha have a beard actually. He had long hair though. Yeah, it was his hair because in the moment what, what on they camera, would do when we were trying to get him to shave it and he was getting really close to there, I felt he was so like, horrible. Yeah, because it was like we were criticizing his creative choice to be the <laughs> hobo, but also I still feel like the baby is a better persona, and I still I. I feel that's honest. Well, I think he was hurt a little bit. He was like, the hobo, the thing that I've invested myself in you're isn't, isn't good enough and you're asking me to, I've also invested in my hair. I've grown out my hair and you want me to shave it off to be a baby. And the reason why we know this is because they did on the fly interviews where we weren't there where they asked yeah. Brandon and then that's when we found out that he was on the verge of tears talking about how he talked, to, he went home and he talked to his mom. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of us just looking like assholes in this in this podcast, but you know what? It's the truth. Uh, we were torn, but Daniel, who was our like, I, I think his title was create cr Director. He was a creative, he came on as a creative consultant, but then he basically became a director. Yeah. But it, that's a weird title for reality. Yeah, it's important TV. though. So it's, it's a part of it. He was, I remember Daniel in the corner sitting on the floor with his knees up on his chest <laughs> and literally with his hands in his hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, yeah. He was thinking almost about pulling it. his hair out. And he was on the verge of tears and he was like, We can't make this. And guy then he, <laughs> he and <laughs> we can't do this to this guy. We can't do And we were like, You're right. And then like, joke. I mean, I love joke. I haven't, you know, it's like, she was, you know, she's like, she was focused on the product and she had this, she had the counterpoints. Yeah. It's like, guys, this is, he's not. He's just shaving his head. It's his decision to it, do it. It's not the end of the world. He yeah. can wear a wig. We're like, not gonna make him do it. He's not going permanently bald. This, uh, and all of this is, 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 uh, is good television. Is it was her point of view? Yeah, 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 yeah. Even, even the fact that this is stressing you out is why people will want to watch it. But we didn't document that. No, we didn't. That the, the story the that we're telling now is what should have been commercial kings. Yeah, I think we should have gone so much more raw and and, we, um, and sincere. And there would have been a way to do the show that didn't require this overproduction too. Because our, to uh, that, our, our on the fly interviews, the reason why you hate them and I hate them, if you go back and watch commercial kings, is because. We got to the point where we didn't have any, we didn't do them on location. We said, we'll just do them when we get back to Los Angeles when we're editing. And we'll know what we need to say to connect the dots. And you'll just go out into like a nondescript neighborhood in LA with one cameraman and yeah. a producer, and then you'll connect the dots. Well, what happened was it was no longer an interview. It was, it was kind of scripted. scripted. It was like, oh, we, 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 this is the idea that we need to communicate yeah. here. It was like, we fed it and now you guys need to put this connected you tissue together. You need to say that this guy, once he went home and told his mom and he was on the verge of tears to shave his head, you need to articulate why you let him off the hook and said, you don't have to shave your head, all you gotta do is wear the diaper. 
just be the baby for the commercial. Yeah, and that's then what you he can did. go back to being the hobo. And we would have to say that in the in the uh, on the fly right. interview that we that we shot months later, and it just didn't have. It well, wasn't real. So to 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 wrap this up, you know, so I, t- ten years later, being a producer on this. My point is, being a producer on this stuff is like. It it creates like an identity crisis, and it's you have to. Uh, I think they sleep fine because it's a certain type of personality. Because let, let, let me get to what I'm getting to. Which get is, to it. Well, I've been trying to, which is, um, ten years later, reality TV and people being portrayed and watching themselves being portrayed and understanding, even even if they're not particularly self aware people who understand television production. Almost everyone understands the manipulative nature of reality TV now. Even the people who is maybe even especially the people who are on it, right? Yeah, if you watch if you watch the um after the person wins Survivor and then it's like the live show where they're interviewing everybody who competed that season. Yeah. They'll they'll talk openly about how this is how I was portrayed in the edit. Well, more specifically with 90 Day Fiance. For, they're so genius how they figured out. If you if you had told me, hey, um, so we're gonna do this show called 90 Day Fiance where you know it's people getting green cards, or whatever. It's like, okay, I got it. Uh, and then we're gonna find all these ways to remix this. And one of the ways is we're gonna film before the 90 days, use that footage that we were getting as they were establishing their relationship. Okay, that's the show. Um, and then we're gonna do one where uh, there's a tell all where everyone is on a video chat together and everyone on the video chat has watched all of the episodes of the entire season. So now you've got people saying, commenting on the other couples and like butting in and giving advice about what they should have done. Okay, there's another show, I don't even know what it's called, but it's when couples who have been on 90 Day Fiance in previous seasons sit in their bedrooms and watch a current season of 90 Day Fiance, and you're just watching them watch 90 Day Fiance. And then there's a podcast <laughs> where a dude won't shut up about it. No, but what I'm saying is, is that I feel like culturally we've gotten to a point where everyone understands what they're getting themselves into. And they, and they, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not saying it's if not. If you're chatting for years with, with somebody being catfished, I, I mean, no, 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 everyone not, can't understand to the same. No, no, I'm not saying that it's not exploitive in some way, it, it is. Uh, I'm just saying that 10 years have passed and a whole lot has changed about the way people think about the concept of reality TV and the production. Everybody knows that the things that you're watching on Keeping Up With The Kardashians are produced scenarios and moments and we've gotten to a place where we don't care anymore, right? If you're into that kind of thing, you don't care. Well, and th- but that's a different, I don't, are you into that? That's a different type of reality no, 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 show I don't where watch it's that. like, I mean. I don't, I don't watch that. Early seasons of Duck Dynasty is the last time I've watched anything that has a point of reference for, these are real people that then I can tell that producers have given them a scenario. Hey, you're gonna do this, you're, you're gonna, and you knew it, and you didn't really care. You're gonna go hunting, but it, you gotta have, but you, but here's the problem that you're gonna encounter. Yeah, and you didn't care if they were good at it, if they were good at making it happen. I think what, what ultimately what I'm saying is, regard, I, I'm not, I'm not kind of making a non-point in one sense because it's <laughs> the point that stands is I still feel dirty watching it, right? Regardless of the ethics, I feel dirtier hearing about 90 Day Fiance than like the Kardashians or the Duck Dynasties thing where it's like the storylines are, are manufactured. Well, yeah, but at the same time, these people. They're des- in on it. They decided, I do want to do this. I wanna be in this relationship and this is a way for me to, to actually get a green card or to be in a, I mean, you have to have a legitimate in quotes relationship. But when you have an addiction, like, I'm, first of all, the guy was vindicated. That's the weird thing about it, kinda. He well, was kind of vindicated, but it was. But it seems like there was, a, and they didn't know that when they started filming it. He he needed money to keep paying for the service. You know, somebody at the I door. I think that my wife may be at the door. Uh, oh, they're dropping off a piece of furniture. I need to go meet them at the door. Okay. Oh, I had a cramp. I've been sitting here so long. See, what would be cool is if a piece of furniture was delivered in the middle of the podcast, and what are what are Rhett and Link gonna do? 
You know, Rhett's gonna get up. He, he Is he gonna move the furniture himself and hurt his back? Well, let's let him decide. We know he's got a bad back, but let's deliver some furniture and let's see what happens. Maybe, maybe Link will go out there and say he's gonna move it. Or he'll probably just assume that they're gonna, Rhett's gonna ask him to move it wherever because he has a bad back. It's his fault if he decides to move the furniture himself and his back gets thrown out. There better be cameras there. There's three in here. There's not one out there. We're blowing our opportunity for a reality TV moment. It's like, here, go, go, go out there. That's where the action is. Oh yeah, it's a table. It's an it's an outdoor table. Let me call my wife and ask her. This is this is reality right here. Did the guy was he planning on assembling, or did you talk him into it with a Lacroix? I mean, he's assembling it, and he has Lacroix. Good job. Should I leave my mask on? This whole setup looks good. Everything, boy, the mask really changes the sound, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a bit muffled. Uh, <laughs> so where does that leave us? We, we're, we, you know, right there. Well. Okay, so you're back, there's a guy in there, he's assembling a table. <sighs> Man, I'm out of breath. This, Wait, this, did you move the table? I just moved. Did you <laughs> did you assemble anything? This is why. This is the thing that I didn't anticipate about COVID is what's happening with my beard right now when I oh, wear wow. a mask. I mean, mask beard is a real thing. I it's fine. We should land this reality TV ship. If we, we want to keep it in the context of the vacation, to me, it was. Um, it made me, it added to my feeling of worthlessness, but it was the only thing that I could really do because you can't really go anywhere. My back was hurt. You could watch other shows, you could read a book. I did I did that as well. <laughs> <laughs> you what? I, I, apparently there's enough time to do that and watch <laughs> seven hours straight of 90 Day Fiance. Wow, I mean when it was over, did you, did you tally it up and say, we just watched seven hours? I think, here's the thing, me and you married dudes who run a business and have a lot of stuff lot that of we're people. doing. A lot of people do this on the rig. And we so we think the idea of sitting down and watching, but every time, I mean, I talked to some of the folks that, uh, some of the single folks that work for us and they're like, oh yeah, I watched, I binged so and so over the weekend. Like they watch a whole, tele, a whole season of television over a weekend. And I've it, never they, done and that. And they don't feel worthless. I've, I've ne and I didn't even get to the bottom of this one, but. What do you mean? There's more of it. Oh. But I'm saying that some people are like, oh yeah, I watched the whole. Now that you're back home, are you are you going back in? No, 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 no. Okay, no. okay, that's a boundary. Okay, that's good. I want to hear you say it. Uh, I'm not. Well, yeah. Jesse and I have a window of time sometimes during the week between like nine and ten o'clock where we'll watch television together. Uh, I don't really watch it past like it maybe ten thirty is like the latest, right? Uh. I, I think anything goes 10 in that. 10 p.m. can easily turn into 5 a.m. Anything goes in that window, and I would say that I would technically allow 90 Day Fiance to go in that window because there's very little, like I fall asleep. I'm not gonna keep, I, I'm not gonna watch it past 10.30 because I'll fall asleep. Stakes are low for, for, for sleeping. But I do think that I'd rather watch something that is a little bit more plot driven then I say, you know, save that as a nice treat. It's just like, I also had ice cream my, myself. I ate ice cream twice. Oh, spoon? Yeah, I didn't cut myself or anything. Yeah. But um, I ate ice cream twice during the week. I don't eat ice cream yeah, I don't, outside I, of our show. I, hit, I, 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 I set a boundary. So it's kind of like I had some junk food, I had some junk TV. I feel okay about myself. I'm trying to be okay with it. So don't make me feel bad about it. I felt horrible in the moment. But damn that story! I, I was like, is he gonna? This does this woman exist? She does exist. What? This is freaking nuts! I still think it's nuts that so, she exists. And so, where is it right now? They're uh, they're uh, engaged. I, I I think that the last thing is that they were engaged, but I think that she's she's backed out. Okay. Or she's MIA right now. <laughs> wow. 
So that was our vacation. So I took I have. 30 minutes to talk about 90 Day Fiance, but I, got again, a, I could talk about it forever. Uh, it seems that you could. I got other things from my vacation I could talk about. <laughs> so you want to just, you, you know, if you can watch for seven hours, the, um, two lifelong friends. Is, we're gonna make that tagline Talking for true. a long time. We're gonna make that tagline true. That's what happens when you make a tagline. You, you want, we got anywhere to be? You fulfill it. And there are, there's, uh, there's other meetings. There's oh. a, I think there's one that's starting. Uh, maybe even now. Oh, snap. Well, you gotta give your recommendation. Wreck, baby, wreck, baby, one, two, three, four. So, okay, uh, <sighs> I'm gonna recommend something that, uh, incidentally, you're the one who took it on vacation, and I only knew about it because um, Shepard was like, I think Shepard went to your house or so, I can't remember what it was, but Shepard comes back talking about how you were really excited about something. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, uh, Link's really excited about this. He's buying bidets. Yeah. And I'm like, buying bidets? And he's like, yeah, like a portable bidet. And I was like, oh, portable bidet. I think it came in the mail when you were when he was there. That is genius. Yep, that, I am. So I hear about you getting this thing, and then I'm like. Genius. You know, I go on vacation, and I'm sitting there with a regular American toilet. I feel like a barbarian, you know, just wiping my butt with paper. <laughs> <laughs> doing who knows what to my rectum long term. You might as well be wrapping your cheeks around a tree. Yeah, just like just it's still grow taking it's still a, a sapling and just squatting up and down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a roughed bark sapling, a pine tree. And uh, I was like, man, I gotta get me one of these. And then I go on Amazon, you for like 10 bucks, you can get a little squeezy thing. Oh, I paid more for mine. Well, yeah, I mean, mine did the job. I tested it yesterday. Oh, my, mine, I got mine in my freaking backpack now because mine I, accord, I don't have anything here. Mine accordions shut and goes in a it goes. Oh, in a mine bag. goes in a bag, but it doesn't accordion. Mine accordions out, and it makes it where you can really. Does squeeze it play music it. at the same time? It plays music. <laughs> all I know is I recommend this. Now, first of all, well, you, you, we recommend bidets in general because we have been talking about that. And you know what? I'm beginning to notice that the idea of a bidet is catching on in America. It is, I saw because of it, us. I saw, <laughs> I saw it is a, it's a cultural mo movement, we just happen to be part it's of it. It's a moment. We're part of a movement. There was an Instagram ad, and it was just a little kid talking about how ridiculous it was to wipe your butt with toilet paper, and it was like. What's the ad for? A bidet. Okay, I saw an ad on Instagram for, a, for Tushy. Yeah, dude. It's a bidet. Here's and the listen, thing. Here's you, what you're, I thought. You, you people are resisting this. You, you, you're gonna, it's happening. Your booty is going to be getting sprinkled really soon. It will happen. It's, it's happening. Because everybody it's who does better. it loves to gush about it. No pun intended. Wow, that's good. I was I was on that Instagram. Could be a tagline for I it. saw an ad for Tushy, which was a. It's an add-on to your toilet. That's a bidet. They should be a sponsor. And. Um, they're not a sponsor, but they should be a sponsor. Well, let's make that happen. And I was I was prepping for my vacation. I see this ad, and I say, you know what? All you gotta do is take the lid off the toilet, put it down, put the lid back on, and then hook it up to the water supply. Mm -hmm. But under the toilet, it's not like I have, you know, we both have fancy toilets that yeah. do so much more. But I was like, I'm gonna buy one of these right now and I'm gonna take it with me on vacation. That's a good instinct. So what I, I bought a bidet. Or a good instinct. <laughs> and and when I, I tried to hook it up at home downstairs so Did that- Did you request permission from your Airbnb host? No, I'm I going didn't. to put a bidet on one of your toilets, no, but because then I'm gonna take it with me. I'm gonna leave no trace. Okay. Like a good camper. But I was hooking it up at home and I was missing a piece with my type of toilet so I had to order that piece, it didn't come in time, so I did not take the Tushy on my vacation. You took the accordion. But when I when I was buying the Tushy, there was an add-on for an extra 20 bucks. You can get the accordion portable, and I was like, this is genius. Yeah. I'm genius. Everybody should have one. I'm gonna buy this, so I bought that, and I took that with me, and it, boy, I'd, I'd fill that thing up, and I would squeeze it so hard. You really gotta squeeze. I just don't, it doesn't give me, I, I'm, I want the pressure that I get yeah, you cannot replicate the pressure. I jack it up. I Careful. jack that pressure all the way. Yeah, you can't. You cannot I mean, replicate like a the rocket. pressure. I, I can feel it in my throat. Oh gosh! <laughs> but the, the the bottom line That's is clean. Is maybe a good cheap way so clean you feel it in your throat. <laughs> 
I don't think that the portable bidet. Not a sponsor. The portable bidet is not a good way to introduce yourself to the world of bidets because you'll be like, this doesn't feel. Yeah, that's not. as It's not powerful. You you need a real bidet, but get like yeah, get the tushy. Uh, how much is the how much is the one that's just the add on? I didn't even look at the price. <laughs> it's so good you won't even care. Oh, our the compute the, the main camera just went to sleep. So we're gonna finish up this episode in the singles. In the singles. That, that's how we talked so long. We ran the battery out of this thing. Man, we had some good vacations, man. Yeah, we did. We no, even if they were bad, they're good now because we talked about it so much. We got two podcasts out of this. Oh, you want you? I'm, we can't make this. You point. know how I always want us. Well, we can split this up. No, but, don't split. You know man, what? This is a bonus short. for you. The way that you, you Americans, just look down your noses at the idea of bidets and you ask like stupid questions like, you, you, so you you get wet? Yes, you get wet. Yes, you get clean. You taking a freaking shower before? It's like a, a shower for your butthole. It's not that hard to understand. You still wipe? Yes. First then you bidet to get totally clean, and then if you don't have a dryer on your bidet, then you dab a little bit more. Yeah. But you do an initial wipe to make sure that you're not dealing with too much. Yeah, right now we're first in COVID and last in bidets. Let's reverse that. Come on, America. Yeah. Do something smart for once. I can't recommend the Tushy. Um, Enough. Appliance yet. <laughs> Because A, you they're not paying me, and I want you to pay me, Tushy. Yeah, yeah, Tushy. But when, I want you to pay but him, But I also, I need- Because I get 50%. I need to test it out, and I haven't done it. I just got the piece yesterday that hooks up to my water supply. So the jury's still out on the Tushy, uh, but it looks it looks cool. You can have different color knobs. Oh. And I'll let you know if it, in, in my rec, and your wreck, if it works. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's this, this was not a wreck. This is a rectum. This is not a recommendation. This is a rectum and effect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hashtag Ear Biscuits. We'll we'll talk at you next week. Yes. Uh dang, that was that fun. was a marathon. It's fun. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.